Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Explosion in the Laboratory by Weird Giraffe Games. Explosion in the Laboratory is a small micro game and it is coming to Kickstarter here in the near future. So make sure to check out that link down below after you've watched this video. We do have a prototype version of the game, uh, just the cards themselves. We don't have a box to show you guys. Uh, but as I mentioned, this is a micro game. You have a small deck of cards that you are going to be playing with. And this is a push your luck kind of game in which you are going to be mixing chemicals, elements, trying to create concoctions to score yourself big points, avoiding making explosions. Now, ultimately, there is going to be a big explosion that ends the game, and the person who has the most points at that point is going to be the winner. Let me explain to you how it works down below, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here's Explosion in the Laboratory. Let me explain to you guys how this Push Your Luck micro game works. And again, this is a prototype, so everything you see here is subject to change. The artwork, the components, maybe even some of the rules may be different. You'll want to make sure to check out that Kickstarter campaign link down below to see what changes there could be for this. But as you see, it is for ages 8 and up. 15 to 30 minutes, and 1 to 6 players. All right, here we go. So in this, you are going to have a small deck of cards, and you are going to lay them out as you see here. You've got three beakers here, which are going to represent the three different... Uh, chemical elements that you are trying to concoct throughout the course of the game. You have a deck of process cards, which are going to give you uh, different abilities. There's going to be two on each card, and you're going to uh, get the yellow benefit if you create a double yellow element, and you're going to get the blue uh, benefit if you create a double blue element. I'll explain what that means here in just a second. And you have different flasks. Now, these are going to show you what you are scoring for that particular round. And uh, this will all make more sense here in just a second. You have a uh, player turn card here that is going to keep track of how many turns have been played for that particular round. It's also going to give you an outline of the phases that you'll be doing in your turn. So the first thing is, is uh, your turn planning. Then you're going to be mixing compounds, which will either score you points or will create an explosion. This is the push your luck side of this game. You want to avoid making unstable mixtures and creating explosions, of course. And so how this will work, the first player will start with this card, and after they take their turn, they will turn it, showing second to the second player, and they'll take their turn, and then they'll flip it over and pass it to the third player. And if there's a fourth player, they'll pass it to the fourth player, so on and so forth. And uh, this will show you here the uh, compound guide and what happens when you mix different colors. Now... On your turn, what you will be doing, you will take these lab cards here, and there are six of them, and on the back side of these cards are a bunch of different little tubes, test tubes, full of different chemicals and numbers and colors. Now, you'll shuffle these up face down, and then you'll lay them out one by one, side by side, like so. And uh, what you are looking for is the card with the number up here in the top left corner. So this is a one here. Uh, that number is important because when you look at these three beakers, you're going to count how many exclamation points are facing the bottom. And at the beginning of the game, there's only going to be one. So this is the card that you are going off of, and you are going to be selecting a chemical off of this card, but the chem chemical that you select is dependent on how these cards shake out. So on the far left here, we have the number 20, and on the far right here, we have the number two. You add those two numbers together and you get 22, and that is the chemical you have to select from this card, which unfortunately is red. And red is volatile. It is a dangerous element to work with, but nonetheless, that is what I have to work with my turn. So I take my red element and I'm going to add it to one of my five flasks here. 
And uh, if I add red to yellow, obviously that creates orange, as you can see up here in case you forgot your primary colors. And so I would, if I wanted to do that, I would flip this card over and show here's the orange and it's going to score me four points so long as I don't bust and create a fire in the laboratory. That's what this element right here, or this icon right here means is that I have created one uh, volatile element. I cannot create another. And so if I did that, I would leave the card like that and hopefully I score points. Now, alternatively, I could have added red to blue and created purple, which is pretty much the same thing. Four points, it's a volatile element. I cannot create another one. Uh, you cannot add red to red because that would be two volatile elements and you would automatically ex explode. So there is no double red on the red card, of course. And if I wanted to, I could stop my turn and I would gain points. And what that would look like is, is I would gain this star value point for any of the, the flasks that I have uh, created elements with, which just in this case is the orange one. And then for any of the beakers that I match the colors with, I would score points for that as well. So for instance, I've created orange. This is the orange beaker. Another way you can look at it is the icon here in the center. That's the sun. And you can see that same icon here at the top of the beaker. And so I would also gain the points here in the star value on the bottom of this card, which is two. So I would get six points for my turn if I were to stop. Or I could push my luck and shuffle these cards and lay them out one by one again and see what I get. And if I were to get, say, a yellow, I could add that yellow to this yellow beaker, creating a double yellow, in which case I would get two points and this scroll. And the scroll is the uh, icon that lets you know you get a process card. And since it's double yellow, I would get to use the double yellow side of this card. I would not be able to use the double blue side. And this icon right here shows me when I can use this. So this is usable whenever I do create an explosion. I would get to double my score uh, of my white stars or six points. I don't get to score the black stars and I do not gain a, another card because when you do bust, you score no points, but you do get a process card. And this card right here would let me at least get double my white stars or six points, whichever were higher. So that's pretty nice. If I uh, wanted to add that yellow, for instance, if on my second turn I got a yellow, instead of adding to it to the double yellow, I could add it to blue and yellow and blue create green, of course, and I would get two points and I would score the green beaker as well, which would be one point. You guys get the idea, I think. And uh, you can do this up to three times. You can press your luck three times, creating different mixtures. And so long as you do not create two volatile elements or or so long as you don't get black twice because there are black chemicals here as well and they have that little uh, what looks like a bomb icon uh, to remind you that those are volatile as well now you can add black to any of the ones you see down here but if you get black twice on one of these cards up here that is another explosion and you will bust now after I score my points, if I'm able to score points, any of the beakers that I score points off of, such as green and orange in this case, they are going to rotate following these arrows here. So I would rotate it one space over, and that has increased the value for this particular beaker. And uh, you would see that uh, that would be the same here on the orange. Now, it also is likely to increase the number of exclamation points that you see on the bottom of these cards. And as those increase, you are going to be changing the card that you are working off of. As you can see, there are two exclamation points at the bottom now. And so we would be going off of the two card and using this for the reference. And as you increase on these cards, there's going to be more black elements and red elements that are going to be risky for you to be working with. And that's the gist of the game. You're gonna to continue to do this at an end of a round when everybody has had their turn flipping this card over to remind themselves of the turn order. Then you are going to rotate one of these beakers that has the lowest index value, and that's the number here in the circle. And so these are just going to continue to increase in value as the game goes on. And then the game will end when these cards flip over and you have to rotate it to get to a point with a yellow X, as you can see on. On these cards right here and when that happens that is going to signify that the laboratory has indeed exploded and no one is allowed to do any more work 
you will end the game, count up points, see who is the winner, and that will be the person with the most points. Now, there is a solo game here, and you are going to be going against a robot, and you'll be pretty pretty much doing the same thing, except the ro robot is only going to take one turn, and they will count the three elements that are right there with the numbers that they pick, the number they pick plus the two after that on uh, these cards right here, will determine what three colors they get. And uh, you'll go off this chart to determine how many points they get for their turn. And uh, whoever has the most points is the winner. There you have it. That is Explosions in the Laboratory. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. All right, we're back. And now we're gonna share our thoughts on Explosion in the Laboratory from a gamer and non-gamers perspective. So Sam, you as a non-gamer, when you see this out on the table, what's your first impression? Um, it seemed a little complicated. These cards, there's just, there's a lot on them. <laughs> yeah, there and is. And so when you, if you know nothing about the game and you just see this out, you you really wonder what's going on, but... And not only that, but you also have some flasks, some beakers. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to see on these cards and it can be a little intimidating. Yeah. But even as a gamer. But the second you figure out the rules, which are pretty brief, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, this is a an interesting game because for it to be a micro game, you know, typically when we think micro games, we're thinking that this is just a simple idea, it's straightforward, and it's done in quick in 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes max. And while this game does go 15 to 30 minutes, uh, probably if you're playing with all six players, it would be 30 minutes. Um, it's still not exactly such a, a straight vanilla experience like yeah. maybe what you're you're typically used to with micro games. This is a unique game altogether. Yeah, you're going to be uh, you, shuffling these six cards as you saw in the rules portion, and you are going to be getting a number that that corresponds to a specific uh, that, beaker. That's an interesting flask way of figuring out what your what color you get i've never seen anything like that where you're really clever doing math and yeah very extremely random yes yes you are getting a completely randomized number assigned to you and you it's your choice to determine how you want to add that to your flasks do you want to make a double yellow do you want to make a green do you want to make an orange which is a bit risky because it's a flammable object or a, a volatile object uh, element and, and so there's there's some definite choices in this game, and I all feel like it all is very compelling, and it's a very interesting uh, gameplay experience as you are trying to determine what is your best bet to get you the most points that round without going too far and exploding yeah. like a good solid push your luck type game. Yeah, so for you, Sam, how was it for you as a non-gamer to find your way through this game and, and put together a strategy? Um, it was really easy. Um, after, I mean, literally after one round, you really kind of understood what you were doing. So okay. it's it's a great game for non-gamers, I think, okay. and it was pretty easy to understand. I don't think there's a whole lot of strategy to it because um, you really, it, it's very random on what um, you, what, what number element, you end up yes. Getting. And so you just kind of have to roll with the punches and, and do the best that you can, but you do get to push your luck and kind of choose if you want to, which I found... Uh, it wasn't so much of a bad push your luck game to where you're. It's not a 50 50 chance. It's not I a think huge mo punishment. I think most of the time you're pretty lucky. Well, and I think as the game progresses, you are going to find that more and more, there's more and more opportunity to bust and, and it cause an explosion because the way these cards are designed is that the game, as the game gets further and further along, there's less and less of an opportunity for big points and more of an opportunity for big explosion. So it gets really tight there towards the end of the game and it creates quite an exciting exciting finish for more often than not uh, the times you play this game. And so I think that's a really cool way that it's designed. You really have to weigh your choices as far as which of the different uh, the complex elements you're gonna make. Is it, or do you wanna make green? Even though green is maybe cycled through a lot and it's gonna speed up the game and cause it to end or do you want to maybe go for more of the uh the purple element or the 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 red uh orange element or whatever the case may be depending on whatever game you're playing it, it'll shake out differently 
It's a good choice, I think, to make in that space of choosing or not whether you want to go for the bigger points or do you want to speed the game up or do you want to slow it down? Do you want to play it safe? I think there's a lot of good choices to make in this game and it, and it works well not only for the non-gamer but also for the gamer because it makes it inter interesting and compelling and it's all wrapped up quick in 15 minutes. Yeah. So really cool idea with this here explosion in the laboratory it is on kickstarter so make sure to check out that kickstarter link down below leave us some comments about what you think about this game make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content i'm lance i'm sam and we are love to hate where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers we'll catch you next time